Today, brothers and sisters, we are continuing our series on spiritual disciplines, but very appropriately because of what today is, we are doing the spiritual discipline of celebration. And so this is a combination Easter message and a spiritual discipline message. As with always, our question is, uh, we have two questions. Why? Why do the spiritual discipline and how? Um, our, our first question is, why celebrate? Why should we take time to celebrate? Well, there's a, a, a number of reasons culminating in what I believe to be the most important of all and what the scripture, scriptures teach us is the most important of all. But first of all, we see that we celebrate because God instituted celebrations for the people of Israel right from the beginning. Celebration is important, and God set it into the DNA of the people of Israel right from the start. These are some of the feasts that, that the Jewish people celebrated, and, and many of them they st still celebrate today. Here's a list. The Passover which was the day that, uh, that they celebrated God's bringing them out from Egypt with that final plague, the plague uh, of the death of the firstborn children of Egypt, and, and the passing over of the angel of death. Uh, passing over the the children of Israel. This is uh, you can read about this, of course, in Exodus chapter twelve, verses one to four, and uh, and many other places in the scriptures as well. It was a day in March or April, uh, the fourteenth of Aviv. Um, the second is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which followed immediately after the Passover and celebrated the the coming out from Israel. This was a full week of celebration following Passover, the 15th to the 21st of Aviv. So altogether with Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they celebrated for a full week or for eight days straight. Then uh, also in March or April, the third thing they celebrated was the Feast of First Fruits. Exodus chapter 23 verse 19 will teach you about that. Or they also celebrated the Feast of Weeks, which was 50 days after, after that. We call it Pentecost because it was 50 days after the Passover. And this would make it a Sunday in May or in June. Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. They also celebrated the Feast of Trumpets, which was uh, a day in September or October. The 20, uh, Leviticus 23 verses 23 to 25 can tell you about that. The Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur, which Jewish people still celebrate today, is Leviticus chapter 16 verses 1 to 34, which was another day in September, October. They also celebrated the Feast of Booths, in uh, Leviticus 23, verses 33 to 38, this was an eight-day feast in September or October. They also had the, the new moon feasts. So every month when there was a new moon, they would celebrate that. That was Numbers 28, verses 11 to 15. And they had Sabbath year festivals, which were, were a full year of rest for the land and release for the slaves. You can read about that in Exodus 23. They also had Jubilee festivals or feasts every 49th or 50th year, depending on how you do your math. Um, we can read about those in Leviticus chapter nine ver or chapter 25 verses 9 to 52. And in the Jubilee year, the captives were liberated, debts were forgiven, there was rest for the land. They celebrated all the time. And these were just the feasts that God himself ordained in the beginning uh, during the time with Moses. But there were other feasts that they celebrated as well. But most of all, we celebrate because of Jesus. 
Let's read John 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in um, Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So why celebrate? Why celebrate? Celebrate because he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is Christ our Lord, and he has escaped sin and death, and he has escaped the tomb, and he is the first fruits of the living. He is now, just as we will be someday. We celebrate. We celebrate just like Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Which, of course, begs the question, how? How to celebrate? And I, I don't think that many of us need lots of lessons in that, although maybe we're too serious sometimes. You'd have to examine your own hearts and minds for that. But even Solomon, who was all about wisdom and, and so on, he, he, he knew that celebration was important. Firstly, we need to celebrate with enthusiasm. This is what Ecclesiastes 5, verses 18 to 19 says. This is what I have observed to be good that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given them, for this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. This from Solomon. We need to feel free to celebrate as well. Jesus celebrated. Listen to what the Bible says about Jesus. In John chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, we read of Jesus' first recorded miracle. 
And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best until now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Jesus not only celebrated, he went to the wedding, just like so many of us have done, and he, he made the best wine there was. He was even accused of being too much of a party animal. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 19, we read, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Jesus knew that he needed to celebrate. Celebrate with his friends, even with his enemies with sinners, with tax collectors, with all kinds of people. Of course, we need to remember to celebrate with balance. There is a time for everything. As Solomon also says in Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Verse 4 says, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Today, this Easter, is a time to laugh and a time to dance. Most of all, we remember to celebrate to God's glory. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Don't let your celebrations degrade into mere gluttony, drunkenness, and worship of sensual pleasures. Instead, celebrate. Celebrate Easter, celebrate weddings, baptisms, holidays, birthdays, promotions, raises, anniversaries, uh, the weather outside, all kinds of things. Celebrate. And celebrate giving God to glory the whole time. Brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that today is, however small it may be, a celebration for you. May we be disciplined in celebrating. May we rejoice in the Lord always. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the spiritual discipline of celebration. Lord, may we celebrate this Easter. May we celebrate your goodness. May we celebrate all that you have given us today. May we celebrate with joy and abandon. May we celebrate in good measure and at proper times. May we celebrate in ways that give glory to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.